Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Bound to Talk Football. Blake Walker, Paul Arridge with you here. It's another late night episode, so you'll see this on Friday morning. Uh, but we just finished uh, a couple Thursday night games, just wrapped up. I was at Ballard and Des Moines North. Ballard takes care of business hefty over uh, Des Moines North. We got a different episode for you tonight. Um, we don't have any graphics for you because it's been a busy week on a couple sides, so I haven't been able to get to the graphics. Today, we're going to pick every single game happening in week number eight, and we're going to use the help of the Massey Ratings tool, and we're just going to work our way down. All we did uh, was went by best standing games. Basically, don't worry about how the standing or what order the games will be in, but realistically, it's by best games to the worst games. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to talk about the margins just a little bit. Obviously, they have totals um, and who is favorite to win. I'll quickly say that, but Paul and I are going to run through we're going to talk about a couple of the games, like quick pick them, like just straight up quick pick them. Some of them we're going to have a couple of things we want to say about them just quickly. So I guess we'll just run right through it, Paul. First game on the docket, Southeast Polk is at Dowling. Southeast Polk is favored by half a point. I don't hate it, but I'm going to roll with Dowling Catholic. Just favored just a little bit more. Dowling hasn't beaten Southeast Polk since 2015. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I think that uh, I think that's going to be a really good game. But I, I think that Dowling gets it done. It's a this is a Southeast Polk team that's that's dangerous. They're uh, Holden Hanson's uh, been improving as kind of first foresaw, but I believe that uh, Dowling's going to get it done as well. All right, both going with Dowling. West Des Moines Valley is at Ankeny. Valley is favored by six and a half. Valley is six and one. Ankeny is three and four. Kind of coming down to it. Might be a must win game for the Ankeny Hawks. They didn't show up very well against Liberty last week. I think Valley gets the win here. Yeah, I think that loss to Liberty just kind of sucked the energy out of the room. That was a win they kind of needed uh, for the RPI. I know it's a number two team technically, but I think they know that they should be able to beat an Eastern Iowa team. They hold themselves that standard. Every CIML team does. And uh, them losing that one was very tough for their playoff hopes. And now you're faced with a big mountain to climb. You got to beat the number one team in the state. Uh, they win. They, I think he's done this before. They beat teams yeah. that are really good, and then this, lose this is a flip script from last year's game. It's completely flipped. Valley needed to beat Ankeny to stay alive in the postseason. Valley yeah. wins on a last second kick. Yeah, this is a. It's going to be a game where I think Ankeny competes, but I think Valley's been just on a wrecking path ever since I lost to Dowling. Um, I'm going to go with Valley. All right. We're two for two on picks. Ankeny Centennial heads to Waukee Northwest. The Wolves are three and four. Centennial is five and two. The Jaguars are six and a half point favorites. Uh, Paul, I'm going to go with the upset. I think Northwest wins. I think this is a team back against the wall. I think they're very talented. Their schedule is so brutal. I mean, it is so brutal, but they know they have to win. Uh, I don't know. I just see something different here. I think this is a winnable game for Northwest. I like how Mac Heitland's playing. Give me the Wolves in the upset. Yeah, I, I, I really don't like – I mean, don't hate that pick um, because <laughs> that, was, that was about to be a different turn there. Uh, <laughs> Walking Northwest in these situations, Centennial and Walking Northwest for the past three years. It's a great three, game. Where they just compete and it's like a huge playoff game practically. It's huge for the bubble. And so far, I mean, Northwest has dominated that matchup, at least in the regular season. Centennial last year in the playoffs dominated Waukee Northwest. Um, I'm going to go with Northwest as well. I think it's an upset pick. I think Centennial, if they do their job, they'll get it done. But I think that that Waukee Northwest, you're exactly right. They're young, and I, we're kind of waiting on that one game where that young core kind of pieces it together and uh, gets a big win. So I think this is the one. 7-0 Bentendorf host. Three and four Prairie, seven and a half point favorites are the dogs. Uh, Prairie slipping here late. They're going to need some help, and they have to win this game if they want to stay alive. This is a Prairie team that beat Southeast Polk. Um, seven and a half is not too bad, but I still like the dogs. I think Bentendorf is much better than people are giving them credit for. Give me Bentendorf to stay undefeated. Yeah, this one's – I think I kind of agree with this projection here. I think it can be close because I think what yeah. you're seeing is a team that has their back against the wall – They've known they can compete with high-end talent. Um, but this is a big mountain to climb. This is the, the big dog out east. This, uh, if they beat Bettendorf, North, that'd be insane. And their wins would just almost honestly look funny at this point, beating Southeast Polk, then beating Bettendorf. 
I'm going to go with Bettendorf, but I think it's a game where this is close. And um, I know there's not much skill in predicting that, but I think it's it's going to be a team with their back against the wall that gives them their best effort. Iowa City West at four and three will host Pleasant Valley at six and one. The Spartans are favored by 14 and a half. Total for this game is 71 and a half. I thought I like that. I think that's really good. Um, PV's really good, man. I, they are really good. They've only lost to Bentendorf by one. They beat Liberty. Um, Pleasant Valley will win this game. Yeah, I'm going to agree. And it's me. I think style play wise, we've seen this be kind of a mismatch in the past years just because how physical PV always is. And they're. They're great at running the ball and doing what they need to take the ball out of Jack Walls' hands using time and possession, how long those possessions can take. And uh, that defense has been good this year, too. But I think there's going to be points scored, obviously, with that total, especially they think that. Um, but I think PV is just um, going to get it done. One of the bigger games. This is one of our games of the week. So we're going to talk about just a little bit more. Uh, Linmar. At six and one is hosting Iowa City High five and two. Linmar is seven and a half point favorites at home. They're led by Austin Waller and Dylan Musinski in the backfield. And then for Iowa City High, it's Bobby Bacon and Gabe Egelin. They have a freshman, Marshall Sheldon, who is leading the team in tackles. Um, I like Linmar here. I, I've seen a lot of people picking Iowa City High. Linmar is technically favored in this game, but I I like what Linmar is doing. Their only loss is to Bettendorf by three. So I don't know. And Iowa City High has had a couple big games come down to the wire that they've had to rely on. One of their losses is to Juliet Catholic. Um, give me the Lions. I think Linmar wins this game. Yep, and I'm going to agree with you. I know we're just copycatting you right now. But I think that Linmar gets it done. Iowa City High has relied on some miraculous wins. Miraculous like, games. There, there's some crazy wins in there, and I think – I mean, I don't love to do this, but Sea Rapids Kennedy against uh, Lenmar wasn't as great of a matchup as, I mean, you needed a Hail Mary practically, a two-point conversion to beat Kennedy, and uh, Iowa City High did it. So I'm going to go with Lenmar, but um, I, I just think that that Bettendorf game too, they were right there. They, they kind of had to come back late. But I like it. Uh, we'll jump right immediately because it is one of the better games to our 4A game of the week. Decora hosts Western Dubuque. Decora is 7-0. Western Dubuque is 5-2. Decora is not favored. Western Dubuque is favored by a point and a half. I picked against Decora against Waverly Shell Rock, and I was very impressed by the Vikings, and I'm still impressed by the Vikings. I think Decora wins this thing. Yeah, I, I this one is really tough for me to pick. It um, is. It, it's that Xavier one is just such a big one. And then you see the Waverly show rock score and what Cora did the Waverly show. <laughs> it's, it's confusing. I think this is one of those weird games. Where we're just going to see Western Dubuque win. It's going to toss everything on its head. Um, I think it's just a late season. Like we're just going to be confused. Um, so I, I got Western Dubuque winning the talents, obviously there, they beat beaten Xavier and beat North Scott, uh, but I think that I think the upset happens here, even on the road. He's taking it. He's taking it and running with He's it. Taking the upset. First upset. Cedar, yeah. Cedar Falls at three and four goes on the road to face Kennedy two and five. Cedar Falls is four and a half point dogs uh, or four and a half point favorites. Um, Kennedy's starting to roll a little bit. Give me give me Kennedy. I think the Cougars get this win here at home. Yeah, the Cedar Falls team was interesting because at one moment we were really high on them at the very beginning of the year. Um, when they put that beat down on Prairie. But uh, Kennedy, yeah, they have been uh, playing much better than they were, especially at the beginning of the year. I know, I think they know they have a way higher ceiling than they've been playing at. But I I, I don't know. I think that Cedar Falls, I, I picked them so many times to win, and they just haven't. And it's starting, it's starting to get like I'm just grasping at nothing, grasping at air. So – I'm going to go with Kennedy uh, and Cedar Falls. Please prove me wrong because I've been waiting for you guys to, <laughs> to win. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Indianola is on the road taking on ADM. ADM is 6-1. and one. Indianola is 4-3. and three. ADM is favored by 7.5. I like what ADM's doing. Indianola, though, proved their worth last week against North Polk. Uh, but the fact that this is on the road, I, I like the Tigers to win here. Yeah, this ADM team's hot and uh, – they're just a they just a team that reloaded and they haven't even shown any any uh, 
defaulting there. So I'm going to go with ADM as well here. That rushing Point. attack too is just much more, yeah. much uh, more consistent. Only losses to Lewis Central by three points. Yeah. Central Lion is on the road taking on West Lion. It's the Beef Bowl. West Lion is seven and zero. Oh. Central Lion is five and two. Remember they beat Western Christian last week. West Lion is favored by twelve and a half. This West Lion team is very good. I still think PCM is the best in this class, but I like West Lion to take care of business here. I think it'll be a good game. Forty nine and a half is the total. I like the under. I think this will be a low scoring game, but I like West Lion. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go. With West Lion, that team's just been too good this year to pick against. But I will say, uh, Central Lion led by some sophomores and some young guys. And last time, West Lion was a really good team. This is way back, 2020. And yeah. Central Lion had some young guys. Zach Lutmer was the guy that came in and uh, yeah. upset that West Lion team. So there's some, maybe history repeats itself, but this West Lion team, I mean, they don't give up points. So it's very hard to pick up. The Massey ratings once again are favoring the underdog. <laughs> Bondurant Farrar host Pella. Bondurant is two and five. Upset Gilbert last upset Gilbert last week. Pella is seven and zero. Oh. Bondurant is six and a half point favorites. If you remember, they were eight and a half point favorites last week against Gilbert. Pella is not Gilbert. Give me the Dutch. Yeah, I'd agree. I think that if I were to pick Bondurant in this one, I would have need to see them rock Gilbert. I would have needed to see yeah. like a oh and they like did yeah, Gilbert's the better than yeah 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 Gilbert's better than last year so I'm not saying that it's a slight to Gilbert but I'm just saying like for to beat Pella I think you needed to rock for for at least me to pick now I do I agree I think this is really close um, this Bondurant team I think you're getting locked in now at this point because they know they have to win every game you're getting their best effort every week you're not gonna get Pella might have some slippage there because they've just they've been they're seven and zero oh. they don't need to really they're in no matter what. So, yeah, it it's going to be a good one. That's for sure. Uh, our four a, excuse me, three a game of the week. Sergeant bluff Luton at seven and oh goes on the road to take on Bishop Heelan six and one Sergeant bluff Luton is favored by a point and a half. I looked at this earlier today and I sat here and I just, I couldn't make a pick. I'm going to roll with Sergeant bluff Luton. I'm going to roll with the team that hasn't lost yet. I like what they're doing on the ground. Eight yards per carry on the ground. They're not anything crazy in the air, but Bishop Heelan winning this game last year, they did have um, Owen, who was really big in that game. Case and Thomas is phenomenal, but I, I'll roll with the team that's 7-0, and I feel so unsure about it, but I'll give give me the Warriors barely here on the road. Yeah, I'm going to go with SBL too. Uh, it's it's two. We know that SBL or uh, Bishop Heelan, sorry, is going to run the ball. And uh, we also know SBL is going to do the exact same. They've both done it. Yeah, they've done. It's going to be a low scoring one, probably just due to that. And uh, Case and Thomas been great at linebacker, and then that SBL defense has been really good this year too. They're one of those teams that just doesn't give up points. Um, I I see that SBL gets the win. It's going to be extremely close, and this is probably the best game out west. Yeah, in this year. Of the year, know, yeah. Talent wise, Dude. so. Huge one. I mean, I wouldn't be too worried if you're the losing team in this one because if as long as it's close, you're feeling pretty good and RPI probably won't kill you. It's yeah. Both teams they both these teams should be locked in the playoffs. The total is 46 and a half. <laughs> That's all you need to know about that one. Um, it's gonna be wild. Humboldt uh coming off the big win against Algona. Um six and one goes to Clear Lake to take on the Lions at five and two. Clear Lake is favored by one and a half. And I love it. I love it so much. Give me Clear Lake. Uh, I think this is – I pick Clear Lake all the time, man, and I hate that I keep picking against Humble. But I just – like, it's a hangover game. Do you not feel a hangover game coming, and especially nope. on the road? This is a game that turns the RPI on its head. Yep, I was exactly with you there. Uh, and that sucks because I feel like those are both bold picks. But I think this is just a classic letdown spot. You beat Algona and – uh we also saw going to have to use backup quarterback, yep, um, yep. and they still were there. And I think this Clear Lake team, they didn't really show up against Algona either, but I think this is a talented one with Titan Schmidt, and they get them at home too. That's the big thing is now after that big emotional win at home, you have to go on the road to Clear Lake. I think yep. the Lions get it done. Urbandale at three and four host Johnston five and two. Johnston is a 27 and a half point favorite. Uh, give me the Dragons, but – I. Not trap. Well, I mean, 
could be a trap game. I mean, Urbandale put up 28 on Dowling last week. Yeah, I I don't think it will be a trap game mainly because this is a rivalry. I know it hasn't yeah. felt like that, but I know Johnson will try and pummel Urbandale because they love how dominant they've been in that rivalry. So give me Dragons by a lot. Newton, this is going to be a good one. Newton at 5 and 2 goes on the road to take on Gilbert at 6 and 1. Um, this is one of our honorable mentions. So I went back and forth and back and forth. Newton is a one and a half point favorite. I had to pick Newton. I, I think Newton gets the job done. I Gilbert just, there's not enough. Like Will Hawthorne is a phenomenal player. They're so good on the ground, but that's it, man. And they're meeting their team who mirrors them in the running game. And Newton can pass it just a little bit more with Klein. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest here. I, I have to see it to believe it. Now with Gilbert, they've lost too many of these games in these situations. Um, I have to see it to believe it. I have to see Newton. I mean, I have to see Gilbert beat a team that is good, to be it's, honest. A, a team that we know is going to be a tough team to play in the playoffs. They haven't gotten a win yet, it feels like, against a team that's going to be good in the playoffs. So, yeah, give me Newton. It sucks because they're Will Hoffman's putting it all on the table, but. This game is crucial because most likely, I think it cruise or it clinches the top in two spots. Gilbert still has to play Pella in the final week, but I think this could help clinch Newton for the most part um, into the postseason. But again, Gilbert could lose these next two, and then they've lost three in a row, and then it's a replica scenario of what we saw last year, but the only difference is, is their schedule any better that they can make it this year. Uh, West Delaware at four and three is on the road, taking on independence. West Delaware is favored in this game. Six and a half. Um, the Yankovic train, it hasn't left the station yet. I mean, it's still, you know, we're still not quite there. So I got to take independence. <laughs> it just hasn't left yet. Yeah. I, I mean, we're just waiting. We've been waiting for a while now. And, it's a big uh, RPI game too. Yeah, it is a huge RPI game. Um, I think, Give me, give me, give me the Yankovic train. I think we get there this week. I think week, week eight, week eight. That's still late eight, eight, but we're there. And I, and I think they're really close to Waller. Um, so I, I, I'll give them the benefit. I think they're gonna, they need to. I mean, they need to at this point. So. Yeah, big game, big game. Uh, this is one of our other games of the week. Wilton taking on. No, it's not. I lied. Is it one of our games <laughs> of the week? Let's see. Now I, I got a look. Yes, it is. Our 1A game of the week. <laughs> what do I know? Wilton is on the road taking on Regina. Regina coming off that shocking loss to Beckman Catholic. They are still five and a half point favorites. Uh, Wilton is 7-0. and oh. Regina is 6-1. and one. Give me Owen Hassel and the Beebs to go on the road. I think Regina might be a little shell-shocked from last week. That's just my opinion. Um, I like Wilton to keep the undefeated season alive here. Yeah, um, that's a, I, I was really close to this one. I didn't really know which one to go with i think i'm gonna go with regina catholic i think the home atmosphere on the last game of the season and they i think that um this is a really talented team that just kind of fell apart in a week um and i think that they they bounce back here now wilton's been really really good this year they have obviously haven't lost and they're winning dominantly so it's a tough pick but i think may we maybe see regina bounce back there um and get the win Norwalk on the road at Lewis Central. Lewis Central is a 27 and a half point favorite. If this wasn't on the road, I'd really lean not a Norwalk upset, but Norwalk. I think Norwalk keeps this within 27 and a half, especially after what happened in winter set. Lewis Central almost didn't wake up and they almost lost. They rallied down 24 to seven, come all the way back and beat winter set. A couple things have worried me about Lewis Central, but I won't get there yet. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to bring it up till maybe the postseason, but I'm, I'm worried about a couple things. But I think Lewis Central takes care of business here. My my comparison right now is a lot of Southeast Pope last year. They're winning games by one score. Yeah. And you're just terrified because they're preseason favorites. Um, I do see this being extremely close, and I think that because this is a Norwalk team that's young. Good. They've yeah. got – they're young and they have really talented prospects. Um, Luke Burr, Eli Robbins, guys that we've talked about for two years now that have been really good. This Norwalk team's hot. They're three straight wins. That winner set comparison score, if you want to do that, is really close. I think Lewis Central wins, and I'm going to agree with you that if this is on the road, 
I think I would actually that's take more walking. <laughs> yeah. uh, but well, that's a trip. The fact that's that they have to travel to Lewis yeah. Central, I'm gonna yeah. give I'm gonna give it to Lewis Central. Uh, the spread does not know that Alex Minsky, unfortunately, uh, has seen his high school career come to an end. Algona is six and one, host Webster City at three and four. Algona is favored by 19 and a half. Uh, I didn't get to watch. Um, is Algona going to be okay? Or, you know, like, what do you think? I think Algona wins this game, but for the rest of the season, are they going to be okay? For the rest of the season, obviously, the tough troop is they're not, they're not going to be okay. You're losing out on the best quarterback in the state. Um, that was playing at a crazy level. And uh, his little brother, Nathan Mansky, I believe is QB1, unless they go kind of a run pure offense with Evan Alley and Limbaugh. Um, they're still really talented. Obviously, this team was undefeated, and they're probably they're looking like they could go 7-0. and um, They're a two-point conversion from being 7-0. and A wicked two-point conversion attempt. So I think they get it done. This is still a really talented team that I think – can win games, but obviously, like you said, t- title hopes have kind of sadly yeah. passed. I know they they aren't going to admit that ever. But injuries suck. There's no other way around it. Yep. Um, yeah. Waterloo West at five and two host Iowa City Liberty, not North Liberty. This is it'll get to the point where sometimes some of these masquerading things will be different. Uh, North uh, North Liberty, Iowa City Liberty. 31 and a half point favorites, Waterloo West. Uh, I, I've said it. I'll keep saying it. I think them in a tumble next week will be the spot for the playoffs. I think Iowa City Liberty rolls here. Um, it's just they're outmatched. I mean, they, they've they played. They have won the games they should have won, and they're just not – they just don't have the firepower to keep up with the teams that they need to beat. Yeah, they. I completely – that was a perfect way to say it. They just – they have the talent to beat the teams that you kind of look at if it's like 50-50 or – um, those like should win games, but they just don't have the talent necessary to compete with these big dogs. And Liberty, I think, is now safe. Like where they're they're, they're gonna, locked. I, I think they're like, pretty I'm, much. I, I'm, yeah. Well, I know they're like locked for the playoffs. I mean, safe. Like I'm trusting them to beat teams. Oh locked. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. they're I'm, I'm just, trusting them to get wins. Except obviously a, against a good CIML team. Like a yeah. Valley this was a this is a three A school a couple of years ago. That's just one of the cooler stories. Um, Creston at three and four is on the road, taking on Nevada at five and two. Nevada is a 20 and a half point favorite. Uh, Nevada will not cover. <laughs> I think Nevada wins, but I don't think they cover. Bad loss last week for Nevada against Harlan. Needed like one of those. I, my live reaction, I got home, I hopped on the pod with Jack afterwards, just like, a, and I saw that score <laughs> and you could hear it. My voice, I was like, what? <laughs> so, eh. Nevada wins, but I don't think it's going to be much. This district is nuts. It's, 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 it doesn't make a lot of Nevada, sense. Nevada Atlantic has been the team that just wins, yeah. but loses to the Nevada good team. Nevada is, game. for those who don't know, Nevada is fourth right now in the district standings, but because they're eighth in the RPI, they're technically in as a wild card, despite Harlan being above them. And even Harlan's not even the number. Harlan's not even in the playoffs. It's Creston and Atlantic right now because Creston hasn't lost the district game. Yeah. And we're looking at a legit path for Creston to make it. And they started. <laughs> the um, I honestly win. am picking them to win this game. All right, and I go. think uh, now a lot of this has stuff that has to do with stuff that we just don't know. Cause we're not there. Is, ne- is Nevada just, rocked after that loss are they like I, they they're a turnover they prone team i do know that yeah so, or are they like comfortable and they feel like they're confident and gonna be crescent this crescent team has been nasty on fire. <laughs> I mean, they've been scary um weston trap has been ridiculous they just run the ball at eight yards a carry give me crescent i know it's on the road but this is a team that's just so hot and yeah. a team that just faltered big time uh, some may consider one of the better one and six teams, one and six Sioux center on the road at Carroll four and three. We'll quick pick this one, nine and a half point favorites. I think Carroll rolls. It'll be an interesting team in the playoffs. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I, th- I think Carroll gets it done. They held Carroll held around with Bishop healing. So I'm giving them that, that respect. How about this one? Hinton is on the road at West Sioux. Hinton coming off that big, like, in my opinion, shocking win over OABCIG, uh, 1913. They are six and one. They're on the road at West Sioux, three and four. West Sioux is favored by six and a half. Uh, I, I'm I'm all in on Hinton. I mean, that was a really good win over OABCIG. Give me the uh, Blackhawks to keep moving here. Yep, it's the age old 
do you see a team having a hangover game after a yeah. big win? Because obviously we know those those one day schools are circling OABCIG because they get a lot of media attention from Iowa Hawkeye fans and us. So they they know that team's popular and they want to go in and beat them and they did that. But now they got to regroup. They got to regroup. They got West Sioux. It's a good team. And they got to go to their place. I'm going to take Hinton, but scary one. Uh, Goose Lake, a.k.a. Northeast, uh, 7-0, and is on the road taking on Animosa. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, it's true. Uh, they're on the road taking on Animosa at 6-1. and one. Animosa is a four-and-a-half-point favorite, and I like it. Animosa, give me Animosa. I think Northeast is 7-0, but they haven't played anybody, man. Uh, and I, the thing is, I was thinking about this as we're picking these games. We're going to pick every single game. We're going to get down to the games that nobody has really watched. Not a lot of teams have kept up with. And then we'll be used as bulletin board material again. So that's really what this just comes back around. But um, give me Animosa. I think Animosa takes down Northeast, ends their undefeated season. Yep, and we're step for step. I, I think I picked – I had to check my text to Jack because to make sure I was matching up my picks, I picked Animosa. I'm going to roll with them. I think this is finally the game we see Northeast go down. They've had a really tight one. I think it was West Liberty. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was really close. They've had a couple, and uh, you know, but they're going to make the postseason. I think they already clinched oh, yeah. their playoff yeah. spot. So, they had um, team, so, but yeah, I think give me Animosa. Williamsburg six and one goes on the road to Grinnell five and two. Williamsburg is a twenty and a half, twenty eight and a half point favorite. Grinnell just fell flat against Benton last week, um, and I kind of called it when I said either they're going to blow this thing wide open or it's going to be a close game. Uh, Williamsburg will roll here on the road. I love Grinnell. I love him to death. Uh, but Williamsburg is just a different monster right now. Destroyed yeah, Solon. I mean, yeah, I agree. That, that Solon win was just probably one of the most impressive wins in this class. Um, and that race Heitman, great hawker connection right That's now is just broken. Uh, right, uh, I'm going to have a post come out about it, but those stats right now they have it's are stats we haven't seen in a long time. 19 I, touchdowns it, already. It's got to be up there with what Tegan Casper Bauer and um, who is his name at Harlan? The uh, yeah, that was that was one of the better that we've seen. But no, it's it's a recipe for success. Uh, Dallas Center Grimes one and six on the road at four and three. Winter set Winter set is eleven and a half point favorites. I'm gonna both say we're taking Winter set. Um, tough year for DCG, but uh, we'll take the Huskies. Now I will say got to wake up after last week because I'm sure you didn't go to bed too happy and you didn't wake up Saturday morning too happy after blowing that uh, lead uh, Lewis Central. But um, give us winter set. Cedar Rapids, Washington, two and five is on the road at Dubuque. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, don't know what Dubuque that is, <laughs> but it's Dubuque. <laughs> uh, oh, check that. I believe right. it's it's senior, I believe. It's got to be senior. Because okay, if it's it. just Dubuque, it's got to be just Dubuque senior. Yeah, it is senior. Yeah. This is the, as we keep going down. This will be who can we guess which team is playing who? I have the other um, guys here up, so that, that has the names better. So Dubuque, Dubuque senior is a two and a half point favorite. Uh, give me senior at home. Uh, I'll, I'll take Washington just because of that. They they had that big win. I think it was against Jefferson. Um, yeah. And, uh, this I, is I'll gonna turn into a, this is gonna turn into college game day on some of these picks. We're like we're gonna be like the guest picker, and we're just gonna be like, well, but yeah, don't say we didn't pick your game. It's better than not mention it at all. So I'd be lying if I said I've watched uh, <laughs> Cedar Rapids, Washington, and Dubuque Senior this year. And uh, yeah, give me, give, but give me Washington. They have White Young, who's been great this year. He has ten and a half sacks, I think, which I think leads the class. So Des Moines Christian, ten and a half point favorites, four and three, taking on. I'm gonna assume that's Green County. It says Jefferson. Um, but I'm going to assume it's Green County, three and four. Uh, Des Moines Christian is a high-scoring team. They like to put up points. Uh, it is Jefferson, uh, Green County. Um, yep. Give me Green County at home. Mm. I'm going to take Des Moines Christian. They've contended with uh, ranked teams, and they've had really close ones. I think that they've just, they just they know they're, they're a good enough team to take care of business on these weeks, and I'm going to go with it. Love to see it. Love to see it. Yep. Okaboji on the road at Forest City. Okaboji is five and two. Forest City is four and three. Okaboji had a pretty good year running. I know they've they've lost to probably the better teams on their schedule. Um, give me Okaboji on the road here. Uh, I'm gonna also go 
Keep it budget here. Um, I think they get it done. What are they? What are they favored? Six and a half. Uh, six and a half. Expect some points, apparently. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Okaboji. That's close. I know Four Cities played some good teams, Clear Lake, Algona, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with them. Um, I think that Landon Duvall has been having a great year. I'll keep it up. Sioux City North on the road taking on Council Bluffs Lincoln. Lincoln has been getting rocked recently. Got rocked by Johnson. Uh, Johnston. Um, I think they recover here. Sioux City North is favored by four and a half, but I like the links to get back on track here. Yeah, uh, I like I like uh, Council Bluffs Lincoln to get back going. I think Johnston, that loss, you can't really write. Like, you can't diss them. And uh, Sioux City North hasn't played really the comp compared to them, so I think they get it done. North Fayette Valley, 6-1, and one, ranked top 10 in the rankings. Kind of sneaky. Um, I don't think they played last week. It was either last week or two weeks ago they didn't play because uh, they played against Old Wine. It was a forfeit. Um, they're taking on Crestwood, 20.5-point favorites. Crestwood's a good team. They've played a couple teams close, but played Decorah close, if I remember. Uh, give me North Fayette Valley. Stay, stay on the good track of a good season. Yeah, they've been having a really good year. The only blemish is – Independence, who we know is a good game or a good team. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, they're gonna close out the season here and get the win. I think. MOC Floyd Valley four and three taking on uh, Boyden Hole Rock Valley, it's the Battle of the Valleys, eighteen and a half point favorites. I'm gonna assume we're both gonna pick the Dutchman here. They play a tough schedule. They're in a very good. This is a very good district. Um, mm -hmm. Boyden Hole Rock Valley used to be a very good team. They are still a good team, but uh, used to go to championships. Good. Yeah, good to a uh, good team. Davenport North, four and three, taking on Muscatine at, at two and five. Davenport North, uh, wow, four and three. Shout out Davenport North, 12 and a half point favorites. I think they get their fifth win of the year. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. Kaz has been great this year. And uh, I think that they were really close to being a playoff potential team because they almost beat Waterloo West Yep, um, in a close one. So uh, give me give me Davenport North here as well. I think they get it done. Marion two and five on the road at Mason City two and five. Marion is favored by four and a half. Uh, let's think. Give me Marion. I think a little bit tougher of a non-district schedule. Uh, give me Marion. Yeah, I'm gonna agree. I think they've had kind of a tough one. They they've lost to some really good teams. You know, they've lost to like CCA, <laughs> uh, North Scott, just, right? Hmm? Yes. What do you say? I, was just about to say, I just realized Muscatine Davenport North actually happened tonight <laughs> as we're recording oh, this. This is a Thursday night. Yeah, you want to find, yeah, right? see if you can find a score? Yeah, I'll look it up. That's funny. <laughs> I I was like, I says Thursday. <laughs> Did you see like the date was weird or something? Yeah, I saw the date. I'm like 10 17. I was like, today is 10 17. I doubt you. You might be able to find a score. The Wildcats put away 30 to 22. Wow, so not, not a bad game. Shout out Davenport North, man. Five wins. That's pretty good. Uh, that's an above 500 record. Live pick. Fact. You're not going to get much better than that. That's yeah, I mean, I, just, I don't know what to tell you. Paul and I got this thing figured out. Ames yep. on the road going to Sioux City East. Ames is one and six. Sioux City East is five and two. Uh, the Raiders are fighting for postseason. So uh, give me Sioux City East. I think they roll. Um, but they don't have a big leash when it comes to what they can and can't do here. Yeah, I agree. I think they get it done. They they're a pretty talented squad than what we normally see out west. Um, I think that the that Luton Grimsley's been great this year. I think Ames is just tough year. Um, struggling, struggling. Yeah, they're struggling. And I think that Sioux City East gets it done. Iowa Valley on the road taking on Bell Plain. Our first eight player Thank game. You. Iowa Valley is seven and zero. Oh. Bell Plain is six and one. Eighty and a half is the total. Uh, over. I don't. <laughs> I don't think. That's awful. So Iowa Valley has averaged 70 points a game. Um, Bell Plain lost to Montezuma a couple weeks ago. Their defense is just not quite there. Give me Iowa Valley to keep on rolling. Yeah, I agree. I think this Iowa Valley team has just been on a wrecking path. Uh, Nolan Kriegel has been ridiculously good. Only one interception and like 46 touchdowns or something silly. I know it's eight, man. So a uh, little skewed, but they're, they're a really talented eight-man team. Caleb Hack's been great this year, too. So give me Iowa Valley. Unity Christian two and five on the road at Western Christian four and three. Western Christian coming off the loss to Central Lions, 17 and a half point favorites. Uh, the Wolf Pack get back under back on track here. Um, I still think they can be a dangerous team in the postseason, but I think they take care of things here. Yeah, I, I'm gonna agree with you there. They're I think they can be dangerous. They just uh, slipped up against a good Central Lions team. That's a that's a good team. I think we've realized. So give me Western Christian. 
Boyer Valley on the road taking on Arweva. Boyer Valley is six and two. Arweva is four and three, one and a half point favorites. Give me Arweva. Um, yeah, give me Arweva. I think a little bit tougher of a schedule there. Um, so then give me them. Yeah, give me. I'll, I'll take Arweva too just because they, they played Woodbine pretty well. And I think that's one of the better teams in this district. And Boyer Valley got rocked by Woodbine. So I did the good old comparative game. Yeah, there you go. Boone at four and three. Playoff hopes are on the line. They'll take on North Polk at seven and zero. Oh. North Polk is favored by thirty four and a half. North Polk coming off the very close win against Indianola. The comments might be looking ahead, dude. I'm, I mean, you got ADM next week. You don't really want to look ahead. I'm not going to say this is going to be a Boone win, but give me North Polk. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's closer. Yeah, it could be get maybe a little sloppy, but it is at home, so I'm going to have to go with North Polk to win by quite a bit. Nathan Feldman. Uh, South Central Cal, what, what? Oh, Nate Feldman, yeah. yeah. Um, you're going to have to confirm because it just says Southern Cal, but I'm going to assume this is South Central Calhoun taking on Earlham. South Central Calhoun yep. at four and three and Earlham at five and two. Earlham is 15, 13 and a half point favorites. Tough, tough loss to Riverside a couple weeks ago, but uh, give me the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals can get something figured out here. Yeah, I think they bounce back. They need to at least. Um, they beat Madrid. They have like good wins. They barely lost to ACGC. So yeah, give me give me your West Liberty on the road at Comanche two and five versus one and six. West Liberty favored by eight and a half. Give me the comments. Yeah, give me the comments as well. West Liberty, I think, gets it done. They had that close against Northeast. Uh, that's a pretty impressive one. And they beat Animosa. So. Yeah, very good team. Logan Magnolia on the road at four and three, taking on IKM Manning, or as Massey ratings, IKM Mania. <laughs> uh, four and five favorites for Logan Magnolia, or four and five, four and a half point favorites for Logan Magnolia. Uh, this is a pretty good team. I, they've been kind of up and down the last couple of years, but I think Logan Magnolia gets it done here on the road. Yep, I'm going to agree with you. I think Logan Magnolia gets the win over IKM, and uh, they've been a team that, I mean, they have they beat St. Albert, who's kind of decent. They're just like, I mean, respectfully, like a mid-average team. So Yeah, just your average run-of-the-mill average pack team this year. Uh, Harlan taking on Atlantic. All right, here we go. It's a big one down here, a little bit further down. Harlan is a 20-and-a-half, 28-and-a-half point favorite. I just saw that spread. <laughs> uh, Harlan is 4-3. and three. Atlantic is 6-2. and two. Harlan's on fire right now. Um, lost to Crescent, and then they woke up. Give me Harlan. Yeah, this is scary for Atlantic just because you start off the year so well. I need we need to figure out what is going to happen with Atlantic's record. Like, are they going to drop the game at the beginning of the year against Jefferson? Like, I'm just very curious how this is going to work out because they've played eight games already. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that entirely works. Know how it works. <laughs> they where it doesn't matter. You're playing extra game, but I don't think that would be how it works either. So. You I don't know. We're, we're in scary hours for Atlantic. Um, this is a big game for the district. I mean, this is this is a big district game. So you started the year off so so hot. You know, it was like six and zero, oh, and then you slip up. I mean, look at the past scores. If you have, if you can, like they haven't beat Harlan in bound history, and they back played two thousand six since two thousand six, and they've played sixteen times. Dang. They haven't done it. I mean, Harlan is a good program. But. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of Harlan the last couple of years. But, but I mean, this is to not have won a game in 20 years. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can actually check for you uh, historically how Harlan has faced against Atlantic all the way back. Let me. Um, more. Head to head. I, I I'll even go as far to say they haven't had a close game since 2014. So I don't know how far back. Okay, since 2000, because I believe Massey ratings goes back to 2000. Atlantic is only beaten Harlan once. So take that as you will. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I have to go with Harlan. Uh, that win over Nevada is huge, and then they just they haven't lost to Atlantic. And at some point in these high school levels, that kind of matters. Just a program yeah. being better than the other. Um, but, I mean, good run game out of Atlantic. So maybe they get it done. But I spent a lot of time on this game. <laughs> it's important. Yeah, game. we did. 
Uh, let's go back to quick picks. Oskaloosa at Burlington. Both teams are two and five. Burlington's favored by two and a half. Give me Oski. I'm going to go with Burlington. I, I mean, <laughs> we're quick picking it, so we might as well All right, go quick pick. Let's move. <laughs> it, it is tough. We're predicting every game, which we normally don't do. Yeah, yeah. But we got it. It's going it, to be – there's going to be some picks with no uh, – Oh, they're no, going to be so bad, and people are going to be ticked off. But don't say we didn't pick your team. Uh, Eldora. What team is that, Paul? I know what team it is. What team is it? Don't cheat. It's South Harden. Yeah. South Harden is 6-1, and one, taking on Columbus <laughs> Waterloo Catholic – uh columbus catholic waterloo 21 and a half point favorites give me south harden columbus made it to the dome last year that was i remember that was just like, what a what, run what, what a that? run um, um yeah give south me south harden they've been really good this year uh jackson jury been great and peyton Welch. so give me south harden St. Edmund, four and three on the road, taking on Glidden Ralston, three and four. I, I keep picking Glidden Ralston. It just ain't working. St. Edmund is a 14 and a half point favorite. They're one of the best four and three teams in the state. I mean, we know that. They are one of the better teams that is really talented. They've played a tough schedule. Give me St. Edmund, the Gales, get it done. Yep, I'm going to agree with you. I think they get it done. They, yeah, I mean, you stole it right from me. They've just played a tough schedule. I mean, an eight man, too, it's kind of funny. Just play yeah, that's. Schedule. It's hard yeah, to play. Yeah. Wrestling. <laughs> yeah. uh, St. Edmund, or excuse me, Sumner Fredericksburg, four and three, taking on Applington Parkersburg, two and five. Give me Sumner Fred, another team that was very good last year. Yeah, give me Sumner Fredericksburg. AP just hasn't really got it going. They just got their like first win or second one maybe yeah. recently. So give me Sumner Fred. Riceville, six and one on the road. Turkey Valley, three and four. Six and a half point favorites is Riceville. That's not a lot. Clearly, Turkey Valley has played a tougher schedule. Um, give me Riceville. Yeah, I'm going to take Riceville. I think they they go with the seven and one. Both teams. I mean, if you're going to play comparison, both teams got smacked by Don Bosco, and it's like probably one of the better. The, what where are they ranked? Are they top four? Don Bosco Who? top ten. Don Bosco. Oh yeah, I mean they they got to be up there. Are you talking in general rankings? I yeah, think like, like, three, I think. Yeah, I, I, they're probably a top three. Somewhere, team. Right Somewhere I agree. So uh, they're really good. So you can't really compare it, I guess. But yeah, give me a race. Xavier hosting Clear Creek Amana, five and two versus four and three. This game will not be close. Uh, Xavier is 31 and a half point favorites. Clear Creek Amana, for their sake, you know, got to win <laughs> to make the postseason. Because uh, I don't think they're going to get a wild card spot, but this is for the top two in the district, really. So, Xavier, Saints win. Yeah, give me Xavier as well. I mean, that's a team that we just know is going to be very scary to play. Uh, walk on two and five, taking on New Hampton one and six. Walk on twenty three and a half point favorites. Assume we're both going to take walk on here. Yeah, former state champion in the last. Yep. Eight. yep. People forget uh, that. Shout out, shout out, walk on B O A B C I G. Edgewood Colesburg at seven and zero, taking on Key at five and two. Uh, hidden gem Edgewood Col- Edgewood Colesburg, who has not really played anybody. Uh, that's why they're not ranked in the top ten. They're twenty one and a half point favorites. Um, Key is going to win this game. <laughs> Give me Key. I think they've played a tougher schedule, have they not? The Mutterman or Mulderman or Mutterman, they're they're a good good group of players down there at Key. Give me key. I'll double check that schedule count. I was gonna go with Edgewood. They played. They lost to Don Bosco. They lost to Riceville. So those are two yeah, really good teams combined. Like losses of one. So, ooh, that actually makes me think here. I think I might go with. You gonna go with Key? Key no, I'm gonna go with Edgewood. I'm gonna go with Edgewood. Well, I just made everybody at Edgewood Colesburg mad at me. So, whatever. Yeah. Uh, West Marshall at Union, 21 and a half point favorites. Give me West Marshall. Um, yep. Give me West Marshall. Yeah. Give me, give me I, I learned when I was putting together that post, I did not know Union won a state title in the last 15 years. Shout out Union. I learned a lot from that post. Also, I, I'll say it now. I messed up. Our Weaver did not win a state championship in 2009. Uh, that is Armstead, Armstrong something. Uh, high school that is, I think it's North Union now, but. I thought it was Arweva because the A or whatever, um, mm. whatever it was, 
they were a legit school. They just so. aren't a high school anymore. They combined a different. They combined with somebody. Their last tweet was in 2012, and their last tweet is like, "We are becoming. We're voting on the school name, North Union." <laughs> I was like, well, "That's kind of huh. sad." But, that's um, sad. The championship game is literally for free to watch if you want to watch it when they beat Lennox. Um, yeah, the more you know. There you go. Uh, Westwood taking on St. Albert. St. Albert, both teams are two and five, 14 and a half point favorites. Pfft, I don't know what in the world. I, I guess give me St. Albert, uh, if Master. Yeah, Andy, give me so. St. Albert. That's a team that's played some tough ones. Uh, and they're usually a decent program. I'm, I'm going to go St. Albert. I'm going to assume Wall Lake, W L V A, is Storm Lake <laughs> as they take on Sioux Center, uh, 13 and a half point favorite. Who is it? Is- Sioux Center? Who did you just say? Well, is it Sioux or Sioux Central? I think okay, Sioux Central is the plan. East Sac County. <laughs> Who is Sioux Central playing? Uh, Sioux Central is playing Carroll. Remember? Sioux Central? Oh, Sioux Central playing? is playing East Sac County. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So that's East Sac County. Wall Lake yeah. WLVA is East Sac County. <laughs> All right. Um, in that case, give me Sioux Central. 13 and a half point favorites, four and a three. Uh, give me Sioux Central. Yeah, give me. I told you some of these are going to get rough. Um, Fort Madison, 12 and a half point favorites. Taking on what? 12 and a half point favorite Fort Madison at 0 and 7 is taking on Pleasant Mount Pleasant, who is three and four. What am I missing? Give what do me they Mount- know that we don't? Yeah, that, that's Fort Madison. I know Fort Madison's played a tough schedule. I know that. Uh, give me Mount Pleasant. Yeah, it, it's team. tough to tell me a winless team is just gonna. Yeah, win. that's uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm double checking stuff right now. I mean, they have played a tough schedule, but it's not like they're barely. Yeah, give me, yeah. give me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Colonesco four and four taking on Coon Rapids Baird at one and six. Colo, they score eight and a half point favorites. Give me Colo. Yeah, give me Colonesco as well. They played. St. Edmund last week got rocked, but I think they, they bounced back. Collins Maxwell on the road at East Union. Collins Maxwell, seven and a half point favorites. Uh, give me Collins Maxwell. Please. Yeah, I'm going to go. Mm, yeah, give me give me Collins Maxwell. Uh, All they right, played here we out. go. What? what? What were you going to say? I was on to the next game. I didn't know if you were nope. still talking. On to the next one. Let's okay. go. Let's go. Um, All right, here we're going to test my knowledge again. Sheffield SCMT taking on Bellman Clemmy. Let me really think here. I'm going to use my noggin. Couldn't tell you. Who is it? Uh, I'm finding out right now. <laughs> Hold on. Dude, That's I a... tell you Sheffield SCMT is. What is it? They play West Fork. I think. <laughs> I'm learning, I think man. That... Uh, yeah. It has to be West Fork. Why do they have extra game? Okay, that's weird. Something West Fork. On here. All right. Well, we're gonna assume West Fork is taking on Bellman Clemmy. Uh Bellman Clemmy, two and five. They played a tough schedule. They're in a really tough district. Uh give me Bellman Clemmy. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you there. I think we, Bellman Clemmy. We got some games to go. We got, we got, they're really <laughs> yeah. good. We gotta what? pick it up. Highland at Wapolo. Highland is three and four. Wapolo is two and five. Highland is a three and a half point favorite. Give me Highland. Yeah, I'll take Highland. East Mills, five and two at Woodbine, six and one. All right. Well, I didn't look in there. I said it. 30 and a half point favorites, uh, Woodbine. Tough loss. Yeah, give me, give me a Woodbine. I think they bounced back. That was a tough one. I think they know they can compete with Remsen, and I think team both teams know they probably will see each other again potentially. So, Audubon, seven and zero oh, at Baxter, three and four. Audubon is a 30 and a half point favorite. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, give me Audubon, but Baxter's not bad. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think that's a little bit egregious, but I'm going to go with Audubon as well. That team, I mean, they're number six for a reason. They're, they're going to Bedford, six and one, taking on Southeast Warren. This is one of our games of the week uh, for yeah. eight players. 28 and a half point favorite. South Central or Southeast Warren just got rocked by Lennox. Um, I get Lennox is very good, but Lennox, you know, beat Bedford, blah, blah, blah. I use that whole thing. Uh, Bulldogs win. Yeah, give me Bedford. I think they get it done. Um, I'd love to see them bounce back, though. I would love to see Southeast Warren back, bounce back yeah, here. But I think yeah, you can't really play the comparison. They both got rocked by Lakes, but Bedford was a little bit more competitive. I'll take, I'll take it. Cherokee Washington hosts Sheldon. Uh, Sheldon's two and five. Cherokee Washington. 
Five and two. Uh, give me the Cherokee. Yeah, I'm going to take Cherokee, Washington. That's a good team that uh, has played. I mean, they beat Central Line. So, yeah, oh. give me. Yeah. Atomo is six and one on the road, taking on Des Moines East at two and five. Atomo is 27 and a half point favorites. Uh, I think the Bulldogs win, but uh, they can't think about last week. And they can't think about next week. <laughs> yeah, they, this is kind of a gap week for them. I think they get it done pretty easily against Des Moines East, but um, big one. And it's Waterloo West coming up. Kemper on the road, six and one, taking on Prairie Valley. Oh gosh, who is Prairie Southeast Valley? Southeast Valley. Southeast Valley. All right, uh, twenty-seven and a half point favorites. Uh, Kemper, Kemper wins. Yeah, give me good Kemper. Team. They're a good team this year. Really good. Rock batting's been great. Uh, we must be missing something. Northwood Kensett at two and five on the road at Dunkerton. Dunkerton is four and three, and Northwood Kensett is favored by thirteen and a half. Uh, in this case, uh, give me Dunkerton at home. I mean, I don't know. I'll go against the. Pick. I mean. I'll trust the model, I guess. Trust the model. <laughs> Easton Valley. I'll, I'll pick one of these funny, like, <laughs> random spreads, I guess. Easton Valley, three and four on the road at Lone Tree, two and five. Easton Valley is 12 and a half point favorites. Lone Tree won a state title in the last 15 years. There's your crazy stat of the day. Uh, Easton Valley. I picked them a, yeah, to go to the yeah. Dome at the beginning of the year. They haven't really done yeah. that, but uh, Easton Valley wins. Give me Easton Valley as well. Try Center, six and one, taking on Kingsley Pearson, four and three. Tri Center cannot fall asleep. I mean, they got uh, that was a big win. That was a big win last week. I was very impressed. Can't sleepwalk into this one. Give me Tri Center. Yeah, give me Tri Center as well. That was huge last week. I think AJ Harder's been great, and uh, no reason to doubt him. So, one of the funniest teams in the state, and by funny I mean really weird. Assumption is two and five, and they're number two in their district. They are in the playoffs right now, and they're going to make the playoffs. They take on Kia Cuck at three and four. 27 and a half point favorites are assumption. The Knights are going to make the playoffs at four and five. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, give me Kia Cuck. I mean, give me assumption. Okay. Like a, give me, Davenport give me Central me. taking on Cedar Rapids. Jefferson. Jefferson is 21 and a half point favorites. Did Jefferson start three and oh or four and oh? I can't remember. Sorry, what'd you say? You like lagged out. Uh, did Jefferson start out four and oh or three and oh? I can't remember. Four though. Okay. They've lost three straight. They get back on track. Jefferson wins. Wait. Are you talking about Council Bus Jefferson? Cedar Rapids Jefferson. They they don't play. Who who does it say they're playing? Oh, they played tonight. <laughs> yeah. Who won tonight, Paul? <laughs> Who'd you pick? I'll tell you. I picked Jefferson. Yeah, Jefferson won 35 0. Okay. Good. Okay. Those tonight games got us. I, hey, those, those they things. got me, man. Um, I know I what I now now I know to look along the left side. Starmont taking on Makokota Valley, six and one, 21 and a half point favorite. Starmont got beat by Bellevue last week. Uh Makokota Valley wins. I'm impressed by this Makokota Valley team. Yeah, I'm impressed with Makokota as well. I think they get it done. Um yeah, they they're they've been impressed. Oh gosh. Columbus Junction taking on Danville. Um Columbus Junction. Couldn't tell you. I've heard that before. I, feel like for I have reason. too, but you're never gonna believe who it is. I'm just give it to me. I don't. Winfield Columbus. Mountain. Oh, Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> we we are stupid. It's eleven fourteen at night. Uh, give me. I picked Danville to go state. Give me Danville. <laughs> yeah, as well. I mean, they return so much. Is that like the reason? Columbus is a twenty and a half point favorite, but give me Danville. Yeah, give give me. I mean, Columbus. I feel like we picked Columbus. I think I picked Columbus to go to state. <laughs> yeah. I th- Give me Danville. Give me Danville. Give me the Bears. Uh, North Tama, four and three, taking on North Mahaska, three and four. North Tama, 20 and a half point favorites. Uh, I'm a Parachute County man. Give me the Mahaska neighboring county. Give me North Mahaska. Wow. I'm going to go with the 20 point favorites. Yeah, that's, yeah, well, you know, that's like the college game day pick as a celebrity guest picker. Yep. Uh, Siblio Cheatin taking on. <sighs> North, it says North Central. Central spelt with an S. Hold on, I'll find it. I'll it. find it. An 18 and a half point favorite. With an S? Is the that Central the, starts, Yeah. North I mean, Union. It's North Union. All right. Um, Sibley O'Cheaton, four and three. Give him. Yeah, I'm going to take Sibley as well. I think they. they uh, English Valleys. At one and six, taking on New London, who is zero and six. 
Uh, 14 and a half point favorites are New London to win their first game of the year. So give me New London <laughs> to win their first game of the year. I will take the points. Does it say they they don't have a win? It says New London mine, doesn't win. On mine, it says they do. Okay, well, in that case, ours is right. Give me New London still. <laughs> I'll take New London as well. Uh, West Central taking oh, on Central Cater. Central Cater 2-5. and five. West Central is 0-7. Give me Central Cater. Yeah, give me Central Cater. Shenandoah on the road taking on AHSTW. AHSTW sneaky team, 5-2. and two. I think they go to 6-2. and two. Yeah, beat Riverside. Yeah, they're a team that I think we will pay attention to. They got Sternberg. I think AHSTW is scary. Hartley Melvin Sanborn uh, on the road taking on Galen Catholic, 6-1. and one. Hartley Melvin Sanborn is three and four. Give me Galen Catholic to move on. Shout out Cooper yeah, Evil yeah. playing well for Iowa State. Um, every time he comes yeah, up, yeah. Like Hartley Melvin Sanborn. Yeah, There's a lot of former, game. like lower class players playing really well for Bo Iowa Goodwin State. Right too. Yeah, it's it's Never really the cool. live Bo Goodwin. Oh my God, he had three picks on yeah. defense and then yeah, five that, touchdowns. Yeah, I remember I saw that and I think I tweeted Chris Williams. I'm like, that's pride of Kingsley Pearson, dog. I was like, he was a dog. Um, yeah. And then the kid who had the punt block, um, his name was really familiar. I can't think of it right now, but um, said he hadn't touched a ball. ball. Yeah, he yeah, said he hadn't touched a ball since high school. And I'm like, whoever you are, I do know you scored a lot of touchdowns. So, uh, Dubuque Hempstead at four and three, taking on Davenport West at zero and seven. Give me Hempstead. Yeah, give me Hempstead. BGM taking on Moravia. Uh, this total is seventy five and a half points. I think it needs to be a hundred. BGM wins. Yeah. I don't think they're geared for the eight man. The eight man score. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the spreads go over eighty. I'll check at the end, but maybe. Yeah. Uh, give me BGM. We really thought this episode was going to be shorter. We are clowns, and we still have a bit to how, go. How much longer do we have? Well, we got a little bit to go. Uh, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go quick here. Akron Westfield one and six taking on South O'Brien zero and seven. Give me Akron Westfield. Give me Akron Westfield. Yeah. Perry two and five on the road taking on Knoxville three and four. Uh, give me Knoxville. Yeah, give me Knoxville. We're both taking Waukee over Roosevelt. Easy. Uh, yes. Bishop Garrigan, tougher game against GTRA. I was very impressed with GTRA, all things considering. Harris Lake Park, give me Bishop Garrigan to win. Yeah, I mean that's a team you can't really bet against. I'm going with Bishop Garrigan. West Burlington six and one taking on Davis County three and four. West Burlington keeps it rolling. Good season for West Burlington. Yeah, they've been really good. Uh, one of the best rushers in the state. I'll take West Burlington. Lamar's Denison Schleswig. Lamar's is four and three. Denison is one and six. Give me Lamar's. Yeah, give me Lamar's. They're overwhelming favorites. Uh, this is technically one of our games of the week, but it's kind of down there. This class is really rough this week. Northland taking on Bellevue. Bellevue coming off that win against Starmont. Uh, Bellevue is 5-2. and two. Northland is 6-1. and one. I think Northland recovers. Yeah, I think Northland gets back into it. They're favored heavily, so it's hard to overlook that. But they're a ranked team, or we're a ranked team, and I think that they get back on track. Riverside, 5-2. and two. Panorama, 1-6. and six. Give me Riverside. Riverside. Sheridan, 4-3, and three, taking on Clark, 0-7. Oh, I mean, taking Sheridan. Yeah, Sheridan. Uh, Des Moines Lincoln taking on Marshalltown, one and six versus one and six. Give me Marshalltown. Yeah, I'll I'll take Marshalltown. Like schedule. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Schedule. Springville five and three taking on Calamus Wheatland at four and three. I mean, Springville is favored by twenty six and a half. So give me Springville. I like Orioles. Yeah, Springville's been Springville's been good. I've, a good team. Uh, yeah, I'll play. I'll go with Springville. Beckman five and two, Cascade three and four. Beckman's coming off a win against Regina. I think they're hot. 26 and a half point favorites. Give me Beckman. Yeah, I'll go Beckman as well. That they're favored by quite a bit. They're good. Center pointer Banna, three and four. Makoka one and six. Give me CPU. Starting to figure things out here as the season's going on. They're not a bad team. Yeah, I'm gonna go with CPU. They they were they figured it out after a tough start. Uh Esterville Lincoln Central taking on Garner Hayfield Ventura. You remember when Garner Hayfield Ventura lost to Wes Hancock by two points <laughs> to start the year? Give me Garner Hayfield Ventura. <laughs> what wow. happened in that game? That is crazy. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Garner as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's yeah, that's ridiculous. Hudson five and two taking on Grundy Center seven and zero. Oh, Spartans roll. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not picking against Grimm Center. Uh, Waller seven and zero taking on uh, Central Dewitt one and six. Waller continues Waller. to roll. Undefeated North Iowa. Undefeated hmm? season, probably. Yeah. Undefeated season, probably for them. Yeah, yeah. Quiet. Very good team. Made it to the dome a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, North Iowa two and five taking on GTRA. Give me GTRA. I was impressed last week. In the yeah, GTRA year. is a good team. They're gonna be scary. There's a reason I think they stayed in the rankings. Uh, oh boy, here we go, Paul Spencer, five and two, taking on Storm Lake at four and three. Give me those tornadoes. <laughs> Give me Storm Lake. <laughs> I will not be t- picking Storm Lake. Oh. Love, love Storm Lake, but Dang it. can't do it. Um, will Harder shout out in our Discord from yes. Storm Lake. New Fonda, two and five, taking on Sue and Christian at zero and seven. Down year for New Fonda. Um, I think the Mustangs get the win here, though. Yeah, I think they they get back into it, and they think they get this win to end the year. Um, Griswold two and five taking on Exira EHK two and five. Spread says twenty nine and a half in favor of Exira, so give me Exira. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to the model here. You know, okay. To be honest, there no, you go. Uh, Hampton Dumont Cal three and four taking on Charles City at three and four. Down here for Hampton Dumont Cal had a pretty good year last year. Charles City's just been slipping. Uh, give me Hampton Dumont Cal. Yeah, I'm gonna agree. I think Hampton Dumont Cal. I mean, they got beat by Clear Lake pretty rough, but I think it was something where they they're gonna beat Charles City if they are good enough to beat Charles City. So. Uh, Mormon Trail 0 and 7 on the road, taking on Murray 3 and 5. We're both gonna take Murray. Uh, Stanwood, who is Stanwood taking on Clayton Ridge? Clayton Ridge is 1 and 6. Stanwood is 0 and 7. Well, is Stanwood Mormon Trail? Nope. Who is Stanwood? North Cedar. <sighs> Give me Clayton Ridge. How about that? More you know, huh? Give me Clayton Ridge. <laughs> More you know. I'm learning a lot. Lennox, 7-0, taking on Mamoni, 4-3. Lennox is a wagon. Give me Gabe Funk. And, uh, Give me Gabe Funk, yeah. They're so good. They're- uh, Mount Vernon. Why is this so far down here? Mount Vernon six and one, taking on Washington at five and two. Washington got beat by Assumption last week, so uh, Mount Vernon wins this one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Mount Vernon as well. They're they've been pretty good this year. They beat Benton, so yeah. PCM seven and zero, taking on Iowa Falls at two and five. PCM is gonna win this game. They're gonna win the state championship. I don't care. I'm picking PCM. Wow. To win That's I oh, I know. Yeah. Call me crazy. PCM is winning state, man. No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm I'm going out right now. PCM wins state. Yeah, this PCM team's nuts. Give me they're PCM. they're huge, man. They are huge. Uh, Cam five and two taking on Stanton at zero and seven. Is the speaker still running the show at uh, at Cam? Yeah, give me Cam. Yeah, is it Chase? Chase speaker? Yeah, um, I'm gonna go with Cam as well. Yeah. Cam wins. It, uh, he did get hurt, by the way. Ah, oh, dang it. The speaker. He, I remember. I think he tore his ACL at the beginning. Ah, oh, boy. Cam Speaker, that was a legendary team. That was, legendary. that was unbelievable. Um, good times. That was the beginning days of bounds. <laughs> and that was a that was a good time. Uh Emmitsburg. What in the world? Emmitsburg 7-0, taking on 6-1, Manson N. W. Webster. 36 and a half point favorites is Emmitsburg. I'm gonna assume their schedule is much harder, and I know it is, so give me Emmitsburg to keep rolling. Yeah, Manson had a Close game is Sioux Central, and Emmitsburg beat them 56. Give me Emmitsburg. Denver at Dyke New Hartford. Denver's 2-5, and five, Dyke New Hartford 6-1. and one. Tough year for Denver. Uh, Wolverines roll. Only losses to Grundy Center. Pfft. See you in the championship. I don't know. Give me Dyke New Hartford. Yeah, give me Dyke New Hartford. They've been. They're uh, the Council Bluffs. Defense. Yeah. Council Bluffs Jefferson at Glenwood. Glenwood two and five. CB Jefferson is one and six. Glenwood played well against Winterset. Um, so in that case, I'm going to give me <laughs> give me Glenwood. Yeah, I agree with you there. I'm going to go with uh, Glenwood as well. Uh, West Hancock, 36 and a half point favorite, seven and zero against Newman Catholic, four and three. Give me West Hancock. West Hancock. Fremont Mills over Sydney, six one over three and four. Both going to take Fremont Mills. Grandview Christians versus South Harden. Good year for Grandview Christian. Um, but why is South Hart, South Hamilton favored by 34 and a half? Give me Grandview Christian. <laughs> what, really? am I what am I missing? Grandview Christian is a 34 and a half point underdog to three and four South Hamilton. Give me Grandview Christian. We're gonna look I'm like- looking just trying to like look at these stats to compare. 
I don't know. I'm gonna go with maybe Christian. I I see what they're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Woodward Granger six and one, a quiet six and one, taking on West Central Valley at four and three. Give me Woodward Granger. It's a quiet, yeah, give me quiet six and one. What's uh, that? Battle Creek Ida Grove, aka OABCIG, taking on Lawton Bronson. Lawton Bronson is zero and seven. OABCGI, OABCIG coming off the tough loss. Um, give me OABCIG. Rolls. Yeah, I'm gonna got the OABCIG. Winfield Mount Union four and three, taking on HLV at two and six. Give me Winfield Mount Union. Uh, Paul's gonna go the same. Tripola two and five, taking on Janesville at five and one. Janesville is five and one. It might be one of the on this rating might be the worst five and one team in the state. Um, actually, I, I think they're six and one. They're, they're missing a the name. Um, Janesville. Janesville wins. Give me, uh, give me Janesville. Okay. Uh, Clarinda, five and two, taking on Centerville, three and four. Um, Clarinda wins. <laughs> yep. I'm going with Clarinda. I mean, favorite. Yeah. Uh, South Central Calhoun, not South Central Calhoun. South Winnesheet taking on BCLUW, three and four versus one and six. Give me South Win. Give me South Win. Vint Shellsburg, 0 and 7 on the road at Jessup, 3 and 4. Give me Jessup. Tough year. Oh, for also for Jessup. oh boy. Uh, I'm going to be- Okay, never mind. I got it. MMCRU on the road at Alter Aurelia. It said Marmeg Clegg. <laughs> and I'm just oh, going to assume that's, that's MMCRU. Uh, 5 and 2, taking on Alter Aurelia. Give me MMCRU. 5 and 2. Yep, I'm going to take MMCRU. State champions in the last 15 years. Fun fact. Boom. Uh, Ballard was 40 and one and a half point favorites against Des Moines North. They covered, uh, Van Meter, I 35, Van Meter, six and one quiet, quiet six and one. I think they win. Yeah. That's the most quiet, probably six and one. Yeah, Van Meter I was going to say, uh, Sigourney Kyoto, another quiet team at six and one, take it on Eddieville, Blakesburg, Fremont. Give me Kyoto. Yeah. Give me Kyoto. Let's get into the lopsided games. Uh, Clinton, North Scott, Clinton is two and five. North Scott is five and two. Give me North Scott. North Scott. Uh, Clary and Goldfield Dows one and six taking on Spirit Lake at six and one. Spirit Lake's going to the dome. Uh, give yeah, me Spirit Lake. Lake's good. Uh, really good. Roll, rolling Story, Sadel five and two, one and six. Give me Rolling Story. Yeah, rolling story. Did you know on the Massey ratings, if you can click on a game, you can do like who would win in a best of seven series and it sims it out for you? It's a really yeah, great thing. I've done like, for basketball. Yeah, Bound needs to buy out Massey ratings. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wow, it's a great, great tool. Uh, Remsen seven and zero taking on West Harrison at one and six. Give me Remsen. Um, yep. Benton five and two taking on South Tame at zero and seven. South Tame almost won their first game in a couple years uh, last week against Charles City. Not Charles City. Fairfield. Uh, Benton wins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, MFL Marmac five and two taking on Central Springs at four and four. Give me MFL Marmac. Paul agrees. Uh, yeah. Solon taking on Fairfield. Solon wins five and two oh, versus two and five. Waverly Shell Rock four and three taking on Waterloo East at two and five. Waverly Shell Rock wins. Uh, we agree on that. Uh, yep. Guthrie Center to oh ACGC taking on Southwest Valley. Uh, ACGC's rolling. Give me uh, give us ACGC. St. Ansgar taking on Lake Mills. St. Ansgar's only loss is West Hancock. Give us St. Ansgar. Really good post that loss. Yeah. yeah. Uh Mount Air, five and two, taking on 0 and 7 Martinsdale St. Mary's. Give us Mount Air. Carlisle at 0 and 7, taking on Hoover at 0 and 7. Give me Carlisle. Um a yeah. little bit tougher of a schedule. Uh Fort Dodge, five and two, taking on Sioux City West, 0 and 7. Give us Fort Dodge. Fort Dodge is gonna be six and two. Um Don't shut up Bob Dodge. Dodge. against the Mars, man. Come on, eight and one, eight and one Fort Dodge. <laughs> Uh, Central City five and three taking on Midland one and six. Give us Central City West Branch at two and five taking on Durant at one and six. I think Durant's one of the better or uh, West Hand, uh, West Branch is one of the better two and five teams in the state. I said it. Um, yeah, they West Branch MVAOCOU taking on oh gosh, Galva Holstein. What? Well, you know, it's, we know for sure it's MVAOCOUC, whatever. Ridgeview. Oh yeah, Ridgeview. Um, Ridgeview, five and two. Yeah, you're Ridgeview. Uh, home stretch, folks. Here we go. Uh, Monticello, two and five, taking on Tipton at two and five. Give me Monticello. Yeah. Give me uh, Linville Sully, four and three, taking on Central Decatur. Give me Central or give me Linville Sully, four and three. Yeah, 
I'll go Lumbo Soy. Uh, Albernet four and three. East Marshall three and four. Give me Albernet. Albernet, yeah, that'd be good. Nashville Plainfield five and two, taking on Wapsie Valley at five and two. Wapsie Valley is a thirty and a half point favorite. Give me Wapsie Valley. Yeah. Uh, Mid Prairie at thirty and a half, taking on at four and three, taking on Albie at four and three. Well, this is a really good game. Why is it so hidden back down in here? Give me Mid Prairie. <laughs> I'll take – yeah, I'll take Midbury. Uh, Eagle Grove, 0-7, taking on Pocahontas area, 0-7. Pocahontas area is favored by 29 and a half. Give me Pocahontas area. <laughs> give, me, give me Pocahontas area. Uh, Nottoway Valley, 0-7, taking on Ogden, 1-6. Give me Ogden. Ogden, yeah. Don Bosco, 7-0, taking on Waterloo Christian, 2-5. Don Bosco. Don Bosco. Uh, Montezuma, 7-1, taking on – uh, Twin Cedars, 0 and 8. Montezuma. Montezuma. Gladbrook Rhinebeck, 6 and 1 over GMG at 1 and 6. Give us GR. Trainer, Miss Missouri Valley, 0 and 7 versus 6 and 1. Good year for Trainer. Sneaky year for Trainer. 6 and 1. Uh, give us Trainer. Clarksville over Muskwaki Settlement, 5 3 0 7. Give us uh, Clarksville. Pleasantville, 5 and 2. Take it on Cardinal at 0 and 7. Man, Pleasantville is going to be 6 and 2. Shout out Pleasantville. Shout out Goodwin from Pleasantville. Uh, West Monona, 0 and 7, taking on Woodbury Central at 5 and 2. Good game for Woodbury Central to bounce back. Um, Pekin, Louisa Muscatine. Pekin is 6 and 1. Louisa Muscatine is 0 and 7. Uh, quick thought about Pekin. They're a top 10 team again, but man, that loss to Lisbon is going to be really hard to like shove aside, in my opinion. But yeah. Um, yeah. Give us Pekin. Give Underwood at three and four, uh, taking on Red Oak at two and five. Give me Underwood. Wow. Oh uh, yeah, give me what Underwood. Happened? What happened? I don't um, know. West Bend Mallard four and three, taking on zero and six Rockford. Give us West Bend Mallard. Pella Christian two and five, taking on Colfax Mingo. Give us Pella Christian. Postville taking on East Buchanan. East Buchanan is two and five. Postville won their first game. Since October 25th, 2019, last week. Shout out to Postville. That's a big win. I'm, I'm legit wow. happy for him. I am legit happy for him. That's awesome. Uh, I don't think they win this week, though. Give me uh, East Buchanan. Yeah, give me East Buchanan. Uh, Osage and Old Wine, that is a forfeit. Osage will win that one, obviously. Uh, Central Lee at th four and three, taking on Mediapolis at three and four. Uh, give me Mediapolis. Uh, they're 36 and a half point favorites. <laughs> yeah. Hard um, to pick it. Madrid taking on Wayne. Both teams are five and two. Um, give me Madrid. Madrid. That's a weird game. And yeah. finally, AGWSR at one and six is on the road taking on North Butler at four and three. Give me North Butler. North Butler. Wow. Your highest team total. Iowa Valley and Belle Plaine, 80 and a half. Give me the over. Your lowest team total, Dallas Center Grimes and Winter Set. 41 and a half. <laughs> nice, Give me the that. over. <laughs> you want to know anything else? Uh, how about this? Percentage? No. Prediction? No. Yeah, that's all we got. Your largest spread is 40. Slate. I wonder how good we're going to be. And I almost do kind of want to go back and check, but we'll see. What? All right. <laughs> that's every game. Um, I'm tired. <laughs> My legs hurt. I've been sitting here like this. Um, that's all we got, folks. I can't believe I thought this was going to be shorter than it usually is. We'll be back to your regular scheduled programming. We'll have a lot to talk about next week. We might have two episodes yeah. next week because we're going to have a lot to talk about in the RPI. So, um, yeah, that's all we got, man. Enjoy your Friday. Peace, Paul Urge. Blake Walker. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and listening to Bound Talk. Tomorrow.